Hello everyone and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. Today we're going to play through The Big Book of Madness by Maxime Ramburg. This is a deck building cooperative game. I absolutely love it. Um, <clears throat> it's set as you are witches and wizards that have opened up this big book that your instructors told you not to. And what happens? Well, <laughs> you can just guess. We get attacked by six different monsters. We have to go through that book. You can see the book right up in the corner, or not up at the top up there. We'll have to go through that book. There's six pages and um, battle against six different monsters, um, with the last one being we have to defeat that last monster or we lose the game. Um, I'm playing a two-player version. I'm going to be playing solo, but I'll be playing both hands. Um, I've got the red wizard and the blue wizard. <laughs> they don't have names, so I have no idea what they're called. Um, this one's Joe, that one's Mark. I don't know, something like that. <laughs> um, how this game works is the cards that you use are actually element cards. So when you're deck building, you're deck building these element cards. Uh, you're putting these element cards into your deck, uh, and then you're using them to activate spells, uh, destroy curses, all of that jazz. Um, <clears throat> you also can buy a new spells. You can see over here on this left-hand side. So these are going to be spells that are available for purchase. They all will cost two uh, elements of the color. So this would be two air, that would be two water, two earth, and two fire. And what we're going to do is we will open the book, go through five rounds, and then what we're going to do is based on the book page... We're going to place curses on this board, and we will have to try and defeat those curses. If we defeat the curses before we have gone through five rounds, or by the time we've completed five rounds, we've defeated that monster. If we don't defeat the monster within those five rounds, something bad happens, but we continue moving through the book. The only monster you absolutely have to beat is the last one. And how you lose this game is three different ways. One is you don't defeat that last monster. Two is you see this madness deck here. This is a, a deck full of madness cards. They will be you know similar to wounds. They're placed into your deck. They don't do anything. You can't you can't use them for anything. They just clog your deck. But if ever you draw your hand up to your six cards and you only have madness, you are eliminated from the game. And in this game, I'll just stop if there's only one of one player gets eliminated. The other way <clears throat> is if this entire pile, so there's 20 of them here in a two-player game, is in our deck somewhere, and we need to draw another Madness card, well, then we also lose. So just to provide you guys with um, the player aid so you can see it, here it is. Let me just bring it closer. All right. So how our turns will work. First, we have our concentration phase. So we will refresh any used spells. Then we have the monster phase. We'll move that book icon right there, one down the track. So we'll move to one, then two, then three, then four, then five. Then we have our action phase. That's when we can do different things such as learn a spell, cast a spell, gain an element card, destroy a curse, or heck, even heal ourselves. And you'll see all of those as we're playing, so I'm not going to go through them in detail. And then the last is the recuperation phase. So you can only have six cards in your hand. If you have more, you have to discard down to six. Otherwise, you have to draw up to six cards. And then you check to see if you are eliminated. And then we rinse and repeat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this video up into five videos, one for each, I'm sorry, six, one for each round. So we'll start with the first round. So what we do at the beginning, the first thing that we do is we draw the first page of the book. And we have an insect-looking monster. <laughs> they don't have names, so I don't know what to call it. We always have to do this ability. So each player places the top two cards of their deck in their discard pile. Okay, so we'll set this down. And we take the top two cards of each of our decks, place them in the discard pile. Then this tells us the colors 
that of curses that we should be putting out. But first, we'll move the little hat down. I'm playing on normal. Um, so in this first round, you can see there's nothing there, so we don't add any additional curses. But when we get to the second round, we'll add one multicolored curse because there's that there. When we come down to round four, we'll add two multicolored curses. Gets really fun. <laughs> we'll see how long we last. All right, so we'll start with a white curse, or air, I should say. Air, water, and fire. Okay, so to go through the player phase, so I'm going to start with the red guy, just because I'm on this side. And his ability, just so you guys know, everybody has an ability. His ability is during his turn, he can discard one madness card from his hand and draw one card. The blue guy's ability is, during his turn, he can treat one air as any type of element. It's only a one air card, but that's pretty cool. And it's only during his turn. So, we'll start with the red guy. First thing he would do is refresh his spells, but he hasn't used any. Next, we would move this book along the track. So we're on our first round. And then after that, we now begin our action phase. So what we're trying to do ultimately to defeat this monster is to destroy those three curses. So that's what I'm going to look at first. Unfortunately, our air is very minimal. Uh, we don't have a lot of air out right now, so I'm not even going to try and get stop this curse from happening. Unfortunately, that curse will happen at the end of this round, at the beginning of Blue's phase, and there really isn't any way for me to get rid of it, because I do not have four air even out. What um, its ability is, so if we get to this second round, we have to do whatever this curse card says. And that curse card says each player receives one madness in their discard pile. That's actually what all three of these say. So right now we're set to get three madness in our discard piles. <laughs> not good. So that's six out of the 20 already being thrown into our decks. So that's not what we want. So we're going to try and destroy these curses. Now, just, just so you know, even if we move past, so next turn we'll go here and then here and move on. Even if we're past these curses and they've already happened, we can still destroy them. Because if we destroy all three of them, we've actually defeated this monster and we get a positive benefit on this card versus a negative. And maybe I should show this to you guys quick so you can see this. So um, if we defeat the monster, that's the top one, each player who has a free support slot choose one card from their discard pile and place it in their support. However, if we don't defeat it, then each player has to discard one value two card. There we go. And what's nice is this tells us what the next curses will be. So air, fire, and earth. Okay. I'm going to set this down. All right. Move this back to one. Okay, so it's the red guy's first. Uh, it's his turn. He's, he's at his action phase. I think the first thing I'm going to do is use growth. So normally you, you tap it or turn it to say you're using it. I'm just throwing these, ic these tokens on them because I don't have a ton of space. So I'll discard this green so I can draw a card. Oh, look at that. Two, three, four. I have four fire right now. Here is a curse that takes four fire. I'm going to take these four, discard them to destroy this curse. Done. Now, when you destroy a curse, whoever discards four cards to destroy it gets to draw and put a two spotter of any of these into their discard pile. And since I've got a lot of fire, I think I'm going to do air. I'm going to do a two spotter of air. Okay. Now I have three cards left. So with my two blue, with my two blue, I can do a couple things. I could buy um, an upgraded spell in blue. However, the most blue I have is in my deck is three, versus the blue guy, he only has three, but one of his three is actually a two spotter. So he has four points worth of water. So I don't really want to get a water spell. I could discard these two 
and add a two spotter of water into my deck. Or I could just leave them in my hand and draw up to six. I also can use these for my ice ability. And my ice uh, spell, I should say. My ice spell says place one card from your hand into support. <sighs> I can also give my blue friend over there one action during my turn. That's I can do that with the air that card that I have here. And if he did that, there just isn't anything he can do that it would help me cure another cure, destroy another curse this round. So I think instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one air, sorry, one water to place one air in support. Now, the support pools are awesome. Support can be used by anyone. That's one of the big cooperative aspects of this game. So I'm throwing this air here so that during the blue wizard's turn, Mark, as I called him, <laughs> during Mark's turn, Mark can actually use that air as if it was his own. And because of his ability, he could even use that air as a one value of any element. Pretty nice. All right, so then I think I'm going to draw up to six cards. So end my turn. Two three four now i have to shuffle my deck and so i have to grab one of these madness cards and place it in my deck because i am shuffling so you can see there's something to think about about how often you want to be running through your deck you don't want to just play cards to play cards in this in this deck builder which i really like oh and look at that i already drew my first madness <laughs> all right so i have and filled up my hand back to six cards. That is the end of my turn. So now we move on to the blue guy's turn. So first thing for him, we check his spells and we refresh them. Well, he hasn't used any yet. So then we move the marker here. Unfortunately, there is a curse there and it, each of us has to place a madness card in our discard pile. There we go. All right, now it's my action phase. So I think the first thing I'm gonna do is actually activate growth myself, but I have two green cards, so I'm actually gonna use both of them, and I'm overcharging this spell. You can overcharge a spell up to three points, three elements points. So since I did two, I actually get to draw two additional cards. One, two. Oh, that's awesome. Now, if I had done three, I could have drawn three cards. But now, look, I have this green card here. You might think, well, why don't I use this again to draw another one? I can't. I've already used this. I can't use it again until it refreshes during my concentration phase. Now, I have four blue, which was kind of what I was hoping would happen. Because with four blue, I can destroy the blue curse. Awesome. And with that, I get a two spotter of anything that I want. And I think I'm gonna grab a two water. And I will place that into my deck. Actually, discard pile, I should say. All right, so now I have one air at my disposal over there. That air can be used as anything because during my turn, I can treat a value one air card as any element of my choice. <sighs> Red, I haven't talked about this spell. Red, I can use combustion and it lets me destroy one card from your hand. Right now that's not useful. I don't want to destroy these cards. However, I could destroy madness cards from my hand. However, destroyed madness cards are removed from the game completely. Done. Gone. If you cure madness, which is one of those healing opportunities, you can discard two worth of one type of element to heal a madness. Then that madness goes back on top of that deck over there. The nice thing about that is that that then stops you from potentially losing, right? Okay, so I have one of each element. I'm just looking here to see if I can do anything. Oh, I think I've got something. I'm going to use this air element and tap. Oh no, that's not going to work. I was thinking of using the air to let um, our red guy here place both airs in support. 
However, the problem with doing that is that I was thinking I could cure the air this turn, but I can't. That's only going to give me three air since I have to use this air to do that. And since there's one of each element, I unfortunately can't, I can't buy anything. I can't upgrade spells because you can't add more one value spell cards, um, element cards, excuse me. So I think I'm just going to draw my hand back up. Oh, wait, but I forgot I can use this one air as any type of element. So I could actually use it as a blue to place something else into support, or I could use it as a fire, or well, I could use it as an air. So I might actually discard these two, make this a green, so I can put a two spotter of green in my deck. Because I think I'm going to have my blue guy focus on green and blue, and my other guy focus on red and white. Okay. So with that, I'm going to draw my cards, my hand back up to six. Two, three... And because I'm going to shuffle, I've got to place a new madness in my deck. So as you can see, <laughs> you're going to be adding a lot of madness. That's why healing becomes very important. I mean, it feels so wasteful, but <laughs> sometimes you just got to do it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, I have two air and a bunch of water, which is great. And you'll see why in a second. So, now we go back to red. First thing red does is refreshes his spells. Then he moves the book. Now, there are no, no curses here. Nothing happens. So, his first thing that he's going to do is actually use this, this air and discard it to use telepathy. Telepathy says one other player takes one action. So, I'm going to be the blue player now. He can take one action. What he's going to do is take his two blue and use it for ice. Ice lets him place one card from your hand to support. But since I play two blue cards, I can place two cards in my support. One, two. Now, I have two airs in my support. Red has one air in his support and one air in his deck. Hand, I should say. So, I'm going to use all four air to defeat this curse. See ya. <laughs> Sorry. There we go. So now that I've defeated that curse, I get to place a two spotter in my deck. And I'll do two of fire. Okay. Now, I could use his ability right now also to discard this madness to draw another card. However, I don't really want madness in my deck. So instead, I'm going to take these two blues, discard them to cure that madness so it goes back on top. And then I'm going to use these two fire to purchase a level one red spell. Now this one, I'll bring it up close so you can see it. It says one player can discard one card, then draw one card. Not bad. And it costs, I should say. You see here, it costs one red elements, um, element card to activate it. Now each player can only ever have five spells. So if I purchase another spell, I'm going to have to discard one of these. And I'm going to flip this over. So now we have a level 2 that's available. It says, heal up to 2 madness from your discard pile or support. Oh, that's a nice one. Okay, so he has no more cards. So he'll draw back up to 6. 2, 3, 4, ooh, 5, 6. And now we move back to blue. So now we come over here. Blue. Now, see, look at blue's hand. This is something that you have to pay attention to. When you use telepathy, I've used up these cards. I don't get to draw until the end of my turn. 
So this turn is going to be pretty wimpy, right? Because I just don't have a ton of cards over here. So first, refresh the spells. Second, move this to four. Now I can do any sort of activations that I want. The next three spells are going to be spells. Spells, curses, <laughs> I apologize, I'm using the wrong words. Those are curses. The next three curses for the next monster are going to be white, red, and green. However, because we're playing at normal, we're going to have one multicolored at the beginning. Multicolor is one of each color type, so air, water, earth, and fire. So we will have curses one, two, three, and four next round. There is going to be no blue other than we need a blue for the multicolored, and I have lots of blue in my deck. So I'm actually going to use these two blues, and I'm going to purchase that spell over there, that blue spell, and I'm going to bring this up closer to you guys so you can see it. And it says, one player shuffles their discard pile and support into their deck. <laughs> okay, so what's nice about that is, remember how I told you every time I am flipping my deck of cards and shuffling them because I've run out, I have to draw madness. But if I do this right before it empty or fills up or empties out, then I never have to draw a madness card when I do that. That is awesome. So I don't know how much I'm going to use it, but I will place it here. This is the imaginary line of the... <laughs> so these are the reds ones and these are the blues. Okay. That's all that he can do because he's got one red in his hand otherwise. So he'll draw up to six... Three, four, five, and six. Okay, now we're gonna go back to red. So red, first thing is concentration. He gets telepathy back. Then move to round five. All right, first things first. What are gonna be the next spells? So, multicolor is going to show up here. My blue guy has one, two, three. He has all four different types in his hand, but he would have to use a two blue. Oh, shoot. I was hoping that I could get a blue into my support so he could use a single blue. Hmm. Okay, let's do this. First, use my green. And my green spell says draw one card. <laughs> and it's a green. Didn't help me. Okay, so I already have three red. So I might actually want to keep that in my hand because I could then um, destroy the red curse right away. So I think I'm going to use my blue to throw my two spotter of air into the support. And then I'm going to leave my hand the way it is. And then what I will do is I will, unfortunately, I have to grab a Madness, throw it into my deck, shuffle it up, and draw two more cards. One, two. Oh, look at all that fire. All right. We'll be able to do something next round. So with that, we will go back to blue over here. Now, what happens, blue first refreshes spells, didn't use any. This will go to here. Now we check if we defeated the monster. We took that alien monster alien. Insect monster out. <laughs> All right, so we get a nice benefit of, and I'll come back here so I can read it with you guys. Each player who has a free support slot chooses one card from their discard pile and places it in their support. Hmm. They both have free slots. Red has no discard pile. I saw that coming. It's kind of too bad. But blue does. And he's going to do one air. And why I'm doing that is for two reasons. One is because now we could potentially cure air, two, three, four, next time. 
But also, I can use one air as any um, element card for Blue's turn. So, all right, so then we flip the page. Dun, dun, dun. And I'll start this, and then I'll end the video, and you can watch the next one for the next round. All right, our red dragon that we're taking out. Each player discards their entire deck. <laughs> okay, so you might be thinking to yourself, well, why does that matter? Don't forget what happens when you have to shuffle. You put a madness card in, exactly. So now what I'm doing is taking these. <laughs> Poor Red just shuffled. So he's just gonna get another madness nice and quick. And then we move this. Oh, wait, we gotta set up the curses. So the first curse is multicolored. Then we've got white or air. Then red. And last but certainly not least, green. And that's the one I'm most worried about because I don't have a ton of green. So for the multicolored, and I'll read these to you. You have to add one air token to all other curses. So essentially, all other, the other three curses, I would also need to add an air to defeat them or destroy them. Oh, that's terrible. The air one is each player receives one madness in their discard pile. Uh, the fire one is each player discards one earth card. And then the green one is each player receives one madness in their discard pile. So when we come back, we'll be on blue player's turn and we will be trying to take out these four curses within five rounds. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying it. And please do subscribe. All right. Talk to you later. Bye.